adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space, visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of... The Space Patrol! Space Patrol is brought to you by Hot Ralston and Bite Size Wheat Checks. Two famous cereals from Checkerboard Square. Commander, if you read me, listen. Our passengers have got to have medical attention. After what they've been through, they can't stand much more of this pounding. What a shame you cannot answer them. You could tell them what to do. To save all those people, my slaves. Stand by for exciting action on Collapse of the Spider's Web in just a moment. How do you do, boys and girls? My name is Professor Checkerboard, and I am going to make a special announcement for the Ralston folks who make Wheat Checks. Wheat Checks is the only ready-to-eat cereal made just for grown-ups. Yes, the Ralston folks are now making Wheat Checks on purpose for grown-up people like your mother and father, for instance. Now, the reason for this is the Ralston folks have found that grown-ups like these bite-sized wheat checks a great deal. Oh, they are so fond of them, children, they sometimes can't get enough of this wonderful stuff. So, boys and girls, I want you to see to it that there are plenty of wheat checks in the house for your mom and dad to eat. But, just for them, mind you, just for grown-ups. Now, here is another thing. Since Wheat Checks are strictly a grown-up cereal, if anybody saw you eating Wheat Checks, they would think you were a grown-up. And how about that? So, children, from now on, whenever you think of a large bowl full of Wheat Checks with plenty of good rich milk or cream and sugar and maybe sliced bananas, you are thinking of something for grown-ups. You are thinking of bite-sized Wheat Checks, the famous grown-up cereal from Checkerboard Square. orbits around the sun, but a planet nonetheless. Many are the space travelers whose ships have poked their curious noses through the ring-shaped planet's center, only to be trapped in a tremendous gravity field, like a fly in a web. For this is the web of Arachna, the space spider. His empire crumbling around him. Arachna glares revengefully at the man responsible for his downfall and capture, Commander Buzz Corey. As Cadet Happy and Major Robertson help load passengers aboard the battle cruiser, Terra 5. <laughs> It'll be a while before they realize they're free. Don't worry, huh? Once they get back to Terra, get a little rest and some food under their belt, they'll be okay. Hey, hey, Major, what's the matter with him? I'm probably exhausted. Hey, Major, look, it's a girl. A girl, Arachna. Now, I knew you were low, but I didn't think you'd stoop to forcing a young girl to work in your foundry. You seem to take a great personal interest in my slaves. They're people, Arachna. Flesh and blood human beings, and in spite of what you did to destroy them, they're going to know what it is to live and breathe as free people again. You're a sentimental fellow, Corey. If you concern yourself too much with those slaves and freedom, you lose your own. Commander, the passengers are all aboard. I've locked Arachna's guards in the aft section. And the girl's resting, but she's not responding to first aid, Commander. She acts like she doesn't want to live. She needs medical attention, Commander. In fact, most of them do. They're going to get it. 
I'm ready to blast off, sir. Now, first, there's one thing Arachna's going to tell us. The gravitational field outside isn't normal, Arachna. Somehow you've managed to boost it, haven't you? You are a disturbing man, Corey. He sure is. That's how you got caught. You're going to tell us where the booster control is, or do we get that information the hard way? I'm a sensible man, Corey. I know when I'm defeated. Then let's get at it. There are eight capsules of neutronium around the planet's rim. They are activated by the control in the headquarters up there. In fact, there is a neutronium deposit right here. Show us. What's the matter, Arachne? Are you losing your strength? Neutronium has collapsed matter, Happy. A cubic inch of it would be so heavy that nothing could hold it. It would sink right through the ground by sheer weight. Well, then, uh, how can Arachna hold that capsule? The capsule is only the outer cover. In fact, there is very little in neutronium inside. All right, Arachna. Now, let's see those controls. Follow me this way. Hey, Major, is he telling the truth about eight little specks of that neutronium being enough to increase the gravity enough to stop a spaceship? That's right, Hap. Neutronium is capable of generating a tremendous force. He's telling the truth, all right. But I'm afraid he's telling it a little too easily. Well... All right, Arachna. Which are the gravity booster controls? Uh, there are no, no, you don't. I'm not going to get an opportunity to try to fix. Then let me show you. Hey, 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 Capsule, Arachna begins to put a treacherous plan into action. Hastily he connects the control wires of the capsule to the terrified space hole, smiling grimly as he anticipates what will happen the first time the space hole is used. The first time the switch closes the circuit and activates the neutronium capsule. Back there. Well, he sure isn't here. Come on. Commander, he's not up here. Come down here, quick. Did you find something, sir? The neutronium capsule's gone. Was here before we went up to Arachnid's lair. He must have taken it with him. The power's still on. Hey, what's that? That's what I mean. There are seven other neutronium deposits still generating gravity. With that one gone, it'll set up stresses. Well, that means it's just a matter of time before the gravity booster pulls this planet up. What? You should get a more terrifying glass off. With that one neutronium capsule gone, well, that, that would cause a gap in the gravity field. You can get through it and terrify. Hey, the commander, what about you? Well, get those people to safety. I'll follow in that decoy ship as soon as I find the rock. Oh, but the matter. Blast off. off. That's an order. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, Major, we can't just blast off and leave the commander here. We got an order, Hat. Yes, sir. Besides, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. All right, close, boy. Close port. Hey, Jack. Bye, Jet. Shipping away.
Arachna, I know you're out there hiding. I also know that you want me to come looking for you. As soon as I would get far enough away from the ship, you would run through it and blast off. It won't work, Arachna. I'm standing right here until you surrender. You'd better hurry, Arachna. This planet will crumble any minute. You are afraid to come and get me. You are a coward, Kari. We'll see who the coward is, Arachna. I'm waiting here for you. Cadet is calling you. When he turned on his switch, he just signed his own death warrant. Children, do you know who this is? This is David Jurefnik, a great American who has become famous because he bears the distinction of being the first Ralston inventor. Now, listen to what David Jurefnik writes to all you boys and girls. Uh, dear Professor Checkerboard, I thought you would like to know how I eat my hot Ralston. I eat it with bacon. My mom cooks a slice of bacon real crisp. Then I break it up and sprinkle it over my hot Ralston. It tastes real good that way, and I thought other kids might like to hear about it. Signed, David Jurefnik, 108 Elm Street, Chicago, Illinois. Now, children, isn't that a splendid way to eat hot Ralston? Perhaps you have a special way you like to eat hot Ralston. Maybe with jam or honey or chocolate. Whatever it is, write me about it. I, Professor Checkerboard, would like to hear about it. And children, I promise you this. If your way of eating hot Ralston is selected as a winner, then I will put your picture right up here on TV as our next Ralston inventor. So run right out now and get a pencil and paper to take down my address. <laughs> Pencils all ready? How quick you all are. Very well then. Send in your Ralston inventions together with a picture of yourself to Professor Checkerboard, Box 2665, Los Angeles 54, California. That's Box 2665, Los Angeles 54, California. And I suggest that you start tomorrow. Ask your mother to make you some hot Ralston and start inventing away. And remember, wonderful things happen to you when you eat hot Ralston. And now, back to Space Patrol! You okay? Yes, sir. Well, hold on a minute. All right, Rocky, you're going to tell me what you know. 
know you cannot walk. I wonder why the commander won't talk to me. It's a lot of noise. What's causing it? Like he's that meteoric cloud I have. It'd be heavily charged. Yeah, but we passed through meteoric clouds before, Major. They never made noise like this. Captain, we'll be making more than noise if we don't change our course a few degrees. Get out of its way. A pretty good sized chunk of solid matter in it. Where did you hide it, Arachna? Where did you hide the neutronium test? Last good way. Answer me! Where is it? In the central instrument section where the removable service panel. Major, I thought you altered the course. I did have movement with the cloud. Never. Major, look, we're, we're moving toward it. We're not moving toward the cloud, Hap. The cloud's moving toward us. Fast, Major. They're right down on top of us. Major, it's still right with us. No matter what we try to do to get away from it, it stays right with us. Look out! Court, you are going to fetch a court light through them? Through your rocket light? But it doesn't just fit in with your plan. No! You've been enough trouble for one day. Smoke and rockets, Major. Those meteoric pieces, they're, they're still raining all over the hull, and they're sticking to it. What's going on? Nothing seems to be attracting them to the ship. Get back there. Go out. Tell the passengers we're doing everything we can. Right, sir. Too late, Corey. The captain's already throwing the door. The devil is down on the ship. Your friends are too busy to see me, your cod light. Now, look, we, we just ran into a little meteoric cloud. But, well, everything's going to be all right, sir. Uh. Don't worry. Just take it easy and keep calm. Major Robertson's in command. He's one of the best pilots in the space patrol. Major, we've got to get out of this. You're kidding. I know it's that girl, but she's getting worse. I try to contact the commander again. All right, sir. You cannot answer them. You could tell them what to do. The raging major, the commander doesn't answer. The ship's still out there. He's a long size. Serious got it to go out there. There are people aboard that ship in need of medical attention. People who will lose their lives if that neutronium deposit isn't, isn't destroyed. You are concerning so much about my place, you'll lose your own life. Before you get any ideas of trying to escape while I'm gone, remember that that cable you're handcuffed to is carrying 10,000 volts. I... I know that. That's what I'm counting on.
anything we can do? No, we've tried everything. Can't shake those rocks loose from the huh? We don't know why they're so heavily charged or why they're attracted to this ship. Major, we can't hold out much longer. Major, this is happening. The hull's caving in. Top look. Commander! Hey! Central control panel. What Service you hatch. What are you trying to say, sir? Neutronium deposit. A rock that planted. A rock that planted? Smoking rockets. No wonder this ship is acting like a magnet. Let's get it. Well, this ship and transfer the girl to the decoy ship. Put out a call for a space doctor. You can fly the passengers and the prisoners to the nearest medical center. Yes, sir. After that, we can... Major! Major! The must have gotten loose. Look, the decoy ship, it's pulling away. We can get it with a missile. No, wait a minute, I have a better idea. Huh? What are you going to do, sir? Overtake him, Hank. It's a cinch. We'll give a rock a taste of his own medicine. Here, Robbie, help me wire this. It's running a capsule back together. Hey, I get it, sure. Yeah. It ought to work on, on a rock in a space car just the way it did on those meteors. Boy, is he in for a surprise. Well, takes care of a rock now. Spider got caught in his own web. Well, I always said a rock was overconfident. Mm. Now he's really stuck up. <laughs> Why, um... Major, how can you say that about such a likable fellow as the rock knife? Likable? Well, sure, we wouldn't even have caught him if we hadn't relied on his own uh, personal magnetism. <laughs> you get it? In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure which will be brought to you by Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa, and famous Nestle's chocolate bars. N-E-S-T-L-E-S, -E Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. Wait till you taste Nestle's brand new coconut bar. Topped with crisp toasted coconut. So big and delicious and only a dime. Gee, we love all Nestle's chocolate bars. You will, too. Now, uh, now what have those, what have those kids got that I haven't got? I can certainly tell you about Nestle's new coconut bar. Boy, what a bar. It's, uh, it's big and luscious and sweet and creamy. And it's just crammed with fresh, crisp, toasted coconut. Boy, what a bar. And say, how about all these other Nestle bars? Look, there's, uh, there's milk chocolate, and, uh, and there's almond. Oh, and, and crunchy crunch. There, how about that? Now, wasn't that as good as the, as the Nestle kids, did it? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I forgot. <clears throat> N-E-S-T-L-E-S, Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. And now, a scene from next week's exciting action, The Androids of Algol.
Hi, Commander. I was just getting ready to leave the ship. There isn't time. We must blast off at once. Blast off? But I thought at least I'd get a chance to look over this alien civilization. We must get back to Terra immediately. Stand by for vertical blast off. Standing by, Commander. Well, you act like something's wrong, sir. We must get back to Terra, get the Secretary General, and bring him back here to negotiate with Eula and his people. Negotiate? Prevent their declaring war on the United Planets. War? Oh, the rockets. Close ports. Close ports. Fire jets. Fire jets. what happens when Buzz and Happy are confronted with the strangest being they've ever seen, when they encounter the androids of Algol, next week on Space Patrol. today by Hot Ralston and Bite Size Wheat Checks, two famous cereals from Checkerboard Square. Sue Irwin stars on ABC television.